Welcome back. One of the fun parts of our show is always the fashion. What y'all are saying online about it. I even call my style team the glamours. And an extension of that is the mutual love the Tam Fam has for our up and coming fashion designer series. We pick designers who are up and coming and they dress me for the week. It was so popular, we actually did it twice. And you may remember David De La Cruz and the cat suit he put together for this 49 year old mama to wear. It was an instant hit. David's entire collection sold out. Well, professionally, like millions of small business owners, David has struggled to keep his business afloat. And personally, coronavirus has been even more devastating to his family. Just a few weeks ago on Easter Sunday, David lost his father, Candelario, to COVID-19. The day he passed away was the same day he was supposed to celebrate his 58th wedding anniversary with David's mother, who's in a New York hospital fighting for her life. And David joins us in Cyber Hall from his home in Atlanta, Georgia. David, let me first start by saying how sorry we all are for the loss of your father. How is your mother right now? My mother is, is stable. Um, I just actually spoke to her this morning. And the doctors are saying that she's, she's, she's looking like she's moving in the right direction. So I'm very thankful about that. Do you know how they contracted coronavirus? Actually, I actually think I do. Um, my father decided to go to church, uh, despite all the warnings of uh, and social distancing. You know, he he wanted to get uh, some spiritual guidance and decided to go to church on Sunday. And a number of members of the congregation um, came up with pneumonia. So we're assuming that's where where he got it. Did you talk to them about not going to church? I know that for so many people, especially when they are afraid or that's the source of comfort, um, but we also know that it puts you in close proximity to people. Absolutely. Um, in fact, I was reprimanding him uh, after I found out that he, he snuck out. <laughs> uh, my parents were, were staying with me, so... Uh, when he decided to go, he said he was going for a walk. His walk turned into stepping into the congregation. So, mm -hmm. and we definitely told him and reprimanded him, saying, you know, you know, why, why, did, why you decide to not listen to the reports? Shortly after that, um, he started coming up with symptoms um, to the point where, by the time we got him to the hospital, it was. Um, you know, a little too late. Your whole life, you have found comfort in being able to create. To, I remember when you were on the show and taking us through your journey and even as a young kid getting behind the sewing machine and creating, that's been a, a way to relieve stress for you. Clearly, this is unimaginable stress and pain. You've said you can't even look at a sewing machine right now, that oh. you can't even find refuge in something. Right come. now, my attention is solely on um, focusing on my mom. I have not had the opportunity to actually mourn. Excuse me a second. I didn't know I was going to get emotional. Listen, this is, this is life. This is, these are your parents, your family to us. Yes. And you're a part of our TAM fam and folks have been rooting for you. Um, because you're in Atlanta and your mom is in New York, your friends, speaking of fam, your friends have really rallied to help you because the distance, you can't get here to be with your mom. Absolutely. You know, the normal thing to do when these tragedies happen is just to go back and, and see how you can sort of manage this. So I had to ha manage all these things sort of virtually. Um, and my friends who are like my extended family really stepped up to the plate and helped beyond measures 